Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it's my pleasure and honor to invite you today for the second part of our EP Image Ablation Workshop 2021. Today, we are going to present you two cases of atrial fibrillation ablation using high energy. Both cases will be presented by Professor Maciej Wojcik from Medical University of Lublin, great friend of us and one of the best electrophysiologists in Poland. Uh, we are happy to have you with us today. Enjoy! Welcome to EP Image 2021. I'm Maciej Wojcik, electrophysiologist from Poland. Let me say a few words about uh, high power ablation in patients with atrial fibrillation. We'll focus on high power ablation with uh, commercially available contact false uh, catheters, which uh, allow us to use uh, 50 volts. If you go beyond this limit, you will be off label and probably you will need agreement of your local ethical committee. What you see now is um, the beginning of ablation on posterior wall or left atrium uh, close to left pulmonary veins. Uh, I'm using Tacticat uh, ablation catheter. I'm on uh, n side precision. Um, what you see is um, ablation with 50 watts. Uh, it's really, really fast. Uh, a single application lasts just a few seconds. Um, the important thing is to keep um, uh, contact force uh, at least um, 10 grams at its minimum and not to cross uh, 30, uh, 30 grams. Uh, above 30 grams you have no uh, additional value and in fact the lesion will be uh, narrower and uh, shallower and that's not what uh, we intend so uh, with high power 50 volts it's good to keep uh, mm, uh, contact force between uh, 10 and uh, 30 grams uh, you may be surprised uh, that i'm jumping on a posterior wall uh, and that's for purpose uh, when you think about cooling down of the tissue about cooling down of uh, myocardial tissue uh, after each uh, radiofrequency application uh, this myocardial tissue is uh, being cooled down by uh, blood flow but uh, behind the posterior wall of uh, left atrium we have some portion of uh, fatty tissue and behind that fatty tissue uh, there is uh, esophagus and we are very trying our best to avoid any injury, any overheating of uh, esophageal uh, uh, region. Uh, that's why I'm jumping. I'm uh, giving more time for fatty tissue, which cools down much slower than myocardial tissue. Uh, and in that, um, uh, uh, with this method, I'm uh, trying to um, uh, minimize uh, the esophageal uh, injury. Um, our patient uh, uh, during ablation uh, are sedated, but they are still uh, alert. So we have uh, full contact with them. And so uh, what I've noticed uh, when I start to jump on posterior wall, apart from using high power, which is uh, in, fi in fact less painful for, for, for a patient. But uh, when I started using this uh, uh, jumping method uh, on posterior wall, uh, the application are even more uh, more, more, more acceptable by, by patient. And, 
uh, we have uh, less application which were stopped by uh, the, the the patient uh, f uh, feeling pain. Uh, so that's that's the reason I'm jamming on a posterior wall. And uh, to have proof for that uh, with uh, esophageal uh, probes uh, measuring temperature that uh, the cooling down uh, on posterior wall is quite uh, prolonged. So you see I'm now closing, uh, uh, closing um, inferior portion of uh, left uh, pulmonary vein and we'll move uh, on with our presentation. So why hyperablation um, is better, in my opinion? When you think about um, formation of uh, radio frequency uh, lesion, uh, you have two stages uh, of creating the lesion. Uh, resistive heating, uh, which takes just a few seconds, and uh, thermal conduction, which takes much, much longer. Myocardial lesion started 45 degrees centigrade with partially irreversible transient stunning below 50 degrees centigrade. Above this number, above uh, 50 degrees centigrade, myocardial lesion is uh, definitive. We have uh, durable necrosis. Uh, resistive heating reaches maximum uh, value af just after a few seconds um, during standard power ablation when we use uh, 20, 25, uh, maybe 30 volts, uh, temperature rises above uh, 50 degrees centigrade, but tissue necrosis is confined to the first uh, one or maybe one and a half millimeters. Uh, so there's the phase of uh, resisting heating with a uh, standard approach. Then uh, the second phase, uh, phase uh, starts, uh, conductive heating, uh, which uh, goes beyond uh, 60 seconds, uh, temperature uh, in tissue decreases according uh, to its distance from the uh, ablation uh, catheter, so from the resistive heating source, in fact, drops below 50 degrees centigrade and may result in uh, reversible tissue stunning. In other words, it's, uh, this conductive heating uh, may produce uh, non transmolar region. But if we use high power ablation, the, we focus on uh, uh, resistive heating uh, uh, only, which favors the creation of uh, durable lesions uh, with temperatures uh, uh, above 50 degrees centigrade. So, in fact, uh, what we see uh, with our ablation is just the balance between the resistive and conductive heating. And uh, uh, this balance has a major influence on uh, our lesions. We want our lesion to be uh, transmolar and uh, durable and focusing on high power uh, seems to uh, lead us uh, to the goal uh, much uh, faster. With our standard approach, we used 30, 30 volts uh, during our ablation and uh, being on posterior wall, we use 15, 20, 25 volts, uh, depending on the operator. Most of us currently use this contact force catheter and we want to keep uh, uh, optimal contact force uh, with our catheter to, to improve uh, lesion uh, durability. Uh, additional uh, aspect is um, ablation based on uh, lesion size index or ablation index which uh, further improved uh, our effectiveness uh, with uh, uh, ablation. We know that uh, LSI and ablation index are better predictors of lesion dimensions uh, than power, impedance drop or FTI. But still, radiofrequency ablation of atrial fibrillation takes time. 
Expert consensus statement on catheter surgical ablation of atrial fibrillation says that it is recommended to reduce radio frequency power uh, when creating lesion along the posterior wall near the esophagus. But in the same document, we have such a statement that uh, it would be better to use shorter duration application uh, when ablating on the posterior wall of uh, left atrium near esophagus. So in 2017, the most uh, common strategies to prevent atrial esophageal fistula were to lower the radio frequency powers and uh, shorten uh, duration of our application. But in the same year, during an uh, era meeting, Cardius team 2017, uh, Oxford group uh, showed uh, the pilot uh, AF study uh, where they compared two groups of patients uh, treated uh, with a standard approach uh, 20 volts on posterior wall and uh, high power 40 volts uh, ablation of, um, on posterior wall of left atrium. The application were based on LSI. Uh, they wanted to reach LSI 4 or 5 depending on randomization group. Uh, what is uh, most interesting in the study uh, results is that the, um, the numbers of uh, temperature alerts uh, uh, in esophageal uh, probe were much, much lower in high uh, power ablation group than in standard group. So they concluded that it might be better to use high power for short periods than low power for longer periods uh, ablation on a posterior wall. So still in 2017, after coming back home from Europe, I started to use 40 volts on uh, posterior wall uh, and in other regions. And you see this is, uh, the results of uh, first uh, 15 patients, uh, how a time of pulmonary vein isolation and time of uh, single uh, radio frequency application uh, shortened. In the meantime, in the US, they were already ablating with uh, 50 volts. Um, they were using um, contact force catheters um, and uh, pacing during uh, radio frequency application till the loss of capture. And uh, they published uh, their, uh, uh, their results just few a uh, month after the presentation of pilot F study during uh, Europace. They also showed in other paper that uh, high power 45, 50 volts ablation uh, are really safe. Uh, they performed more than uh, uh, 13,000 application in uh, over 10,000 patients uh, with very low complication rates. And when you move back in time to 2011, you will see that the same uh, author uh, published uh, the, uh, his results uh, with a 50 volts ablation with not uh, contact force catheter and the result with 50 volts uh, were quite uh, uh, impressive. So, uh, consequently, at the beginning of uh, 2018, I started to use 50 volts all over the left atrium during uh, ablation of atrial fibrillation. And uh, you may appreciate how uh, shorter uh, were times uh, of uh, a single uh, radio frequency applications and pulmonary, pulmonary vein isolation in this initial 15 patient as compared to patient treated with uh, 40 volts uh, and uh, standard approach uh, with uh, uh, 30 volts. Uh, previous studies show that uh, lesions uh, done with a uh, high power energy settings uh, are shallower but wider than uh, the lesions done with uh, standard settings. Still, uh, these shallow lesions are deep enough to uh, reach transmolarity uh, in left atrium, especially on posterior wall. 
we also know from uh, in vivo uh, validation that um, 50 volts ablation is safe uh, and steam pops uh, started to appear uh, when the settings were uh, over 70 uh, watts uh, with uh, uh, radio frequency ablation uh, lasted uh, five seconds so using 50 60 volts we were on a safe side there are more and more proofs and how they that high power ablation with 50 volts uh, is uh, feasible safe fast and effective like uh, uh, reported in this um, paper where the autos ablated with 50 volts uh, based on the ablation index or just another paper comparing uh, high power uh, ablation of active ablation to conventional approach where um, arrhythmia recurrence rate was much lower in the group uh, treated with uh, high power energy there were much lower number of visual gaps uh, shorter radio frequency time and uh, 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 much lower numbers of uh, alerts, uh, temperature alerts uh, in, on esophageal uh, probe. From my private point of view, I've uh, already treated over 350 patients uh, with uh, 50 volts. What can I say is that the ablation shortened, very shortened. Uh, uh, normal times needle to needle time for me now is between 60 and 80 minutes um, it's quite safe procedure i experienced only one steam pop in all of these patients and uh, i have also the feeling that it's uh, it's more effective i observe my much less uh, arrhythmia recurrence rates uh, in a uh, patient treated uh, with a uh, high power and much less uh, uh, pro arrhythmia effect uh, which uh, we sometimes observe in our patients to summarize i'd like to encourage you to use uh, 50 volts uh, yourself in your lab uh, please try and believe yourself in the high power thank you for watching <laughs>
now we'll check the position of our catheter in uh, RAO. Then that's what I'm doing here. Now uh, we, you've seen already that the needle is inside the latatum and the bit of uh, dye uh, uh, contrast is uh, in uh, left atrium. Uh, I'm not uh, pushing the whole set uh, uh, before uh, changing the needle for the uh, uh, introducer wire. I want to be sure that uh, uh, it will be uh, safe uh, uh, to cannulate uh, uh, left atrium with, uh, with the whole set uh, stiff uh, system. So after the cannulation of uh, left uh, uh, atrium, we perform a uh, cardioversion and now during sinus rhythm, you see we introduce uh, HD grid catheter and so we started uh, uh, mapping the, uh, the left uh, uh, atrium. Uh, it's a bit speed up because we don't want you to spend much uh, time uh, looking at our mapping. Uh, but what we see in this patient that the, the, the left atrium uh, looks generally uh, quite electrically uh, healthy. Uh, so uh, our approach, uh, main approach will be uh, to focus on uh, isolation of uh, pulmonary veins. So after the training of uh, agent grid to uh, tacticus uh, um, uh, ablation catheter, uh, which is now in the position, uh, will uh, perform uh, once again uh, uh, respiratory compensation, just to be sure that uh, uh, it will have the, the, the um, a good uh, starting point. And uh, uh, we'll uh, start with our ablation. So our setting are, uh, are 40, uh, five uh, uh, degrees centigrade and uh, 50, 50 volts. Uh, uh, as you see, I'm trying to, to have the um, contact force between 10 and 30 grams. Uh, yeah, you can appreciate how fast uh, the application uh, is already effective uh, on the posterior wall. We want to have application above four, four and a half LSI. Uh, it's so fast that sometimes the system is uh, not fast enough to uh, mark uh, the effective point. So uh, we need a support guy uh, or lady uh, who will uh, uh, who will uh, check it for us if, uh, and in. If uh, the, the application points are uh, effective, it means in our approach, LSI is more than four, four and a half on posterior wall, uh, will uh, will change the color of the application uh, into red or uh, other color, depending on, on the settings. <clears throat> um, you may be curious why I'm jumping on posterior wall, you see that I um, perform first application with gaps between them. Um, that's for purpose. Uh, uh, that's what I already uh, described during the, 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 the lecture, the presentation, but I will repeat it once again. Uh, being on posterior wall, uh, ablating on posterior wall, we uh, want to be on a safe side uh, as far as uh, uh, esophagus uh, heating is uh, concerned. So our uh, application of posterior wall um, will be cooled down uh, by blood flow when you think about the, the cooling down of myocardial uh, tissue. But behind the posterior wall, we have a um, portion of uh, fatty tissue, and then after behind the, the, this uh, fatty tissue, uh, we, uh, you will find uh, is effects. So while the myocardial tissue is being cooled down by constant blood flow, the fatty tissue keeps the temperature much longer than uh, myocardial tissue. So that's, um, that temperature with additional application will be even higher and uh, 
we we would um, we would increase the risk of uh, esophagus uh, overheating. Uh, on the other hand, using my approach, so uh, giving more time for the local fatty tissue to cool down, uh, uh, we are more on a safe side. Um, I already have proof for this with uh, esophageal probe, uh, and the other the other proof is that uh, such approach is uh, such approach is much less uh, painful for the patients. We perform uh, uh, most of uh, our ablation in Poland in um, sedated but completely uh, alert patients. So we have uh, full contact with the patient as uh, we have uh, uh, during this uh, procedure. And uh, such, um, such approach when you let uh, the, the, the fatty tissue behind the posterior wall to cool down uh, so you give extra time for cooling down the, the, of this tissue of this fatty tissue it's really really less painful for the patient so um, we've already uh, uh, we've already performed the line on posterior wall uh, below left uh, yeah, inferior pulmonary vein and as you see um, these are real time application it's not uh, accelerated recording at the moment so it's really doesn't take much time to to uh, to uh, almost close the uh, left inferior pulmonary vein uh, uh, isolation um, so at the moment so we are on the uh, lateral uh, lateral uh, part of left atrium, uh, just in front of left pulmonary veins. Now, as you see, uh, the, the, the recording has changed. We uh, let you see the rest of uh, left atrial, uh, uh, left pulmonary veins uh, uh, isolation uh, in accelerate, accelerated mode. Uh, what we experience uh, in this patient uh, is the problem with uh, very deep breathing and um, uh, not very compliant patient uh, to our uh, uh, request to stay calm and keep uh, uh, his breathing uh, uh, quite as shallow as possible but still um, it happens, yeah. So, uh, what can you do? You can you, you have to work in the, the environment. Uh, you 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 uh, uh, you are uh, uh, stand uh, in. So, uh, at the moment, we are just closing the the, the uh, uh, left pulmonary vein in, uh, isolation, as you see. The, the catheter is uh, quite movable in this uh, 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 rich position, and additionally, deep deep breathing of the patient uh, didn't help uh, uh, much. <laughs> but uh, finally, we we um, uh, managed to uh, to uh, close uh, the the the, uh, the line. Um, after the performing the, the, uh, the line around uh, pul pulmonary veins, we are uh, 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 checking for for effectiveness of this line uh, for any leaks and gaps. So I'm uh, what I'm usually do, as you can see, I'm just behind the line, not too deep in the side the veins, but just trying to be behind the ablation line, but still to keep the catheter uh, in, uh, in the uh, vein uh, uh, in its ad antrum. And I'm pacing uh, uh, with a current between 10 and uh, 15 millivolts, but still keeping my eye on the contact. So uh, you always have to observe uh, if your pacing catheter has uh, good contact with the uh, tissue. 
Uh, otherwise, you could show that something is isolated, which is when uh, uh, it's it's not. So, uh, contact contact force it's very helpful uh, for proving uh, proving that uh, our pacing uh, is uh, uh, from the from the um, uh, we are pacing the tissue. So we already, as you see, we found a gap on the uh, posterior uh, portion, uh, just uh, on, uh, close uh, uh, close to the junction on posterior on inferior uh, uh, portion of left in inferior pulmonary veins, and during pacing we close it. Now I'm checking again. You see, uh, the, these uh, signals are captured now, but I'm uh, on the posterior wall, just uh, behind the, the, the uh, application line. When I'm getting inside inside the, the region, which uh, should be isolated, uh, the capture, uh, despite a good contact, uh, is not um, captured. So we have the proof that uh, uh, left pulmonary veins are. Um, uh, isolated. Now we'll move to uh, right pulmonary veins uh, uh, and again uh, we'll uh, show it in uh, accelerated mode so uh, just to see uh, just, just to show you how uh, how uh, uh, the line uh, appears uh, point by point and again you see I'm jumping on posterior wall so uh, giving some uh, uh, primary gaps, which I'm uh, closing uh, afterwards. Uh, now we are ablating just below right inferior uh, pulmonary vein and moving the, the, the 3D uh, picture. Uh, we are constantly looking for any gaps and if there are any like in this position, I'm trying to close it. Uh, so we'll move on the uh, anterior uh, portion now. Uh, in this um, superior aspect of right uh, superior pulmonary veins, you know that uh, it's sometimes it's quite uh, uh, quite a thick uh, portion of uh, myocardial uh, tissue. Uh, because that's the region where Bachmann bundles uh, uh, connects. Uh, so, so in, in some cases you have to give uh, extra energy or extra application uh, in this region. Uh, uh, I have two approaches. Uh, first of all, uh, I just ablate and looking for LSI or I uh, ablate during pacing. Uh, just to be sure that um, uh, I have burned through the tissue and I have no more, uh, no more uh, uh, effective uh, capture of uh, my pacing uh, from uh, ablation uh, catheter. So we are just uh, finishing the isolation of uh, right pulmonary veins. There are still uh, some gaps on. Uh, uh, anterior septal uh, uh, region, so we'll go there now. The, the, the recording is not accelerated anymore, so it's a real time application, and you see uh, that um, uh, application is uh, quite, uh, quite fast, just a few seconds, depending on the, uh, depending on the, uh, our contact. Um, Okay, so we are closing, closing, closing any gaps we can see. Um, we are very close to the, uh, the, to the region where uh, we perform transeptal uh, puncture. So we have to uh, be quite delicate and not to dislodge the catheter into uh, right atrium. So now we are just final, final touches. Uh, 
around the line and so we'll be checking for uh, isolation of uh, right pulmonary veins so again i'm uh, i'm um, uh, pacing from uh, tip of uh, ablation um, catheter uh, still uh, keeping an eye on a good contact uh, with the tissue as you can see both veins are effectively isolated uh, so we don't uh, need to perform an additional line in the carina uh, before removing the catheter from the left atrium i always checking for again for for the isolation of uh, left pulmonary veins and as you can see uh, they are uh, isolated so we there is no need for extra uh, application so in fact we are done uh, what we perform is just pure antral isolation of uh, pulmonary veins and uh, well i hope uh, it will be enough for the patient so thank you for watching and being with us Więc zakończyliśmy zabieg u 58-letniego pacjenta z wieloletnim wywiadem migotania przedsionków. Ostatnia próba kardiowersji 18, 2018 rok chwilowo skuteczna, więc praktycznie mamy do czynienia z pacjentem z długoprzetrwałym migotaniem przedsionków. To co wykonaliśmy to mapę potencjałową po wcześniejszym wykonaniu kardiowersji elektrycznej. Tak udało nam się przywrócić rytm zatokowy, tak żeby ta mapa była jak najbardziej wiarygodna. Okazało się to sama jama lewego przedsionka jest całkiem potencjałowo zdrowa, więc zabieg był ograniczony praktycznie tylko do izolacji u żył pustnych. No, troszeczkę problemów sprawiał głębokie ruchy oddechowe pacjenta w czasie zabiegu, a także to, 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 to był jeden z tych elementów, który ten zabieg nam przedłużył, ale izolacja jest skuteczna, więc mam nadzieję, że, że pan będzie wolny od migotania przedsionku. Walking crash. Good morning. The patient is 46 years old male with arrhythmia since 2008. He has past medical history of radiofrequency ablation 10 years ago. Since diagnosis, he underwent several electrical cardioversions. Last one in February 2021, with frequency of atrial fibrillation in around five days. One before EC in August of 2020, with frequency in around one month. The echocardiography parameters are ejection fraction of 29% and left atrium size 5.6 cm. As anticoagulation treatment, patient chronically using Pradaxa 150 mg two times per day. In next two slides, you will see electrocardiography before and after procedure. Thank you. So welcome to EP lab again. Uh, we are now at the moment of performing transeptal puncture with uh, Agilis cerebral sheath. As you see, I'm checking position in uh, LAO and uh, RAO uh, floor view. Uh, when I'm ready for puncture, I push the needle uh, through the transeptal um, to, to the uh, septum, interlateral septum, and we are through in uh, left uh, atrium now. I'm not pu pushing the system to set um, further um, before I introduce uh, the guiding wire which I placed in the uh, left uh, superior pulmonary vein and over the way I am um, pushing the system uh, forward uh, uh, to, to, to get the uh, sheath uh, inside uh, left atrium. Uh, so we are through, we are in the uh, left atrium. Now the age degree uh, catheter uh, has been um, uh, introduced, uh, we perform uh, successful uh, cardioversion. So we have now um, sinusoidamina patient, which will allow us to uh, perform uh, reliable uh, voltage uh, mapping. And that's what we are starting now. Uh, it's um, 
recorded in, uh, uh, with uh, some kind of um, uh, accelerated uh, uh, air rate uh, just to uh, shorten the, the, the process of uh, mapping uh, for you. Uh, so, <clears throat> generally, uh, what we are creating is not only uh, three uh, dimensional ge geometry of left uh, atrium and pulmonary veins, but we are uh, uh, collecting all uh, electrical points. Uh, our thresholds uh, uh, can be seen on a uh, left uh, bar, uh, so uh, everything below 0 0.05 millivolts uh, will be um, treated as a scar uh, uh, and uh, everything about uh, 0. Uh, Five millivolt will be treated as uh, electrically healthy um, myocardium. So we've uh, just finished uh, mapping. Uh, the catheter has been changed. Uh, so now we have um, uh, Tacticas uh, uh, SE uh, ablation catheter introduced, uh, and we are starting uh, with the first ablation point. Uh, each of us has some kind of uh, system uh, where to start and how to go, how to uh, uh, how to perform his uh, ablation. I usually start with um, posterior wall uh, around uh, left pulmonary veins. Uh, what you see now is um, real-time uh, application with uh, 50 volts. Uh, uh, our uh, settings uh, on the uh, radio frequency generator is uh, 45 degrees centigrade and uh, 50 volts. So we'll be ablating with 50 volts uh, in all uh, in all uh, parts of the left atrium on posterior wall and in other uh, regions. Uh, the idea of ablating with uh, 50 volts is that uh, we will have uh, shallow but wider uh, lesions uh, as compared to standard uh, 20, uh, 30, 35 uh, uh, volts. Um, this, uh, this uh, shallow lesions are deep enough uh, to uh, uh, to have uh, the f uh, uh, full transmolarity of the lesion. So, in fact, uh, when you think about the thickness of uh, left uh, atrium wall, uh, you will uh, think about one, one and a half, uh, maybe two millimeters of thickness. And uh, high uh, power ablation uh, is ablation which uh, which uh, depth is about two three millimeters. So in most cases, uh, if there is no any local hypertrophy, it's uh, more than enough to have a transmolarity of the of the lesion. On the other hand, uh, the shallowness of this uh, lesion uh, is some kind of um, safety margin, especially of, uh, on the posterior wall, when we do not want to overheat uh, esophagus. <coughs> so, um, from our observation and from uh, observation of uh, other authors which measure uh, measured uh, temperature in esophagus during uh, radiofrequency applications, uh, a high power ablations uh, uh, decreases uh, the number of uh, uh, of uh, temperature uh, alarms uh, on esophageal uh, probe uh, in cases of uh, all of those who who who, who measure this temperature. Uh, we are performing ablation in uh, sedated but uh, completely alert patients. So we don't use uh, esophageal probe, but for us uh, this complete um, uh, 
contact with a patient uh, is also some kind of a uh, signal. Uh, uh, any pain uh, reported by a patient give us extra information that we could be quite close uh, to esophagus. Uh, so uh, what we have uh, what we have uh, uh, noticed is that uh, with a high power ablation, it's very rare for the patient to report pain, and especially when. Uh, I started to uh, perform uh, uh, applications um, uh, in uh, with some kind of a distant on posterior wall. That what you saw in a previous um, uh, case and uh, on this case as, as well. So uh, I'm not uh, performing the continuous uh, line from the beginning on the posterior wall. I'd rather jump uh, to let. Uh, give some time to the fatty tissue to cool down. As I said before, the fatty tissue is cooling down much, much uh, slower than myocardial tissue, which is uh, cooled down by content, content uh, blood flow uh, inside, inside the left atrium. So that's uh, the idea of uh, high power ablation and is my jumping on uh, posterior wall just to minimize the risk of uh, esophageal injury uh, to its uh, minimum. Uh, additional, additional benefit of performing, uh, performing ablation in a uh, alert patient is that uh, having full contact with the patient, uh, we don't need, in, my, in our opinion, this extra uh, probes in, uh, uh, in e esophagus. Uh, and as you know, uh, the use of these probes uh, is um, questioned by, by uh, others. Uh, there are some uh, reports uh, showing that uh, using the probes uh, in uh, uh, esophagus uh, could be even uh, more dangerous in some cases uh, uh, as the probe is uh, pushing the esophagus towards the uh, posterior wall of left atrium and in uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, that way uh, it could even uh, um, increase the number of overheating in uh, uh, esophagus. So <clears throat> at the moment, as you see, we are close to uh, the reach between a left uh, atrial appendage and a left uh, pulmonary, left superior pulmonary vein. Uh, probably you already noticed uh, that these real-time applications are really, really very short. So having having in mind that um, we want to keep um, the contact force between. <laughs> 10 and uh, 30 grams, uh, which is enough to 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 <coughs> uh, uh, to have a, a reliable vision, and uh, um, the contact force of over 30 grams uh, doesn't give us any extra benefit apart from uh, the risk of very, very short uh, application, uh, which uh, could be so short that uh, we could overheat uh, uh, this uh, uh, the, the part of the, uh, the, the, the myocardial uh, tissue. Um, so, um, as you see, you are just uh, in the uh, upper portion of left uh, superior pulmonary vein will be closing uh, uh, the, the pulmonary vein uh, isolation uh, soon. But what we experience uh, in this patient, uh, which you already noticed probably, yeah, that uh, we had lots of problems with uh, stabilizing his breathing and uh, 
we we constantly trying to 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 um, uh, keep in touch with the patient, uh, requesting him to uh, uh, stay calm, uh, still, and uh, uh, keep his uh, breathing as shallow as uh, possible. But uh, despite uh, this, despite our uh, uh, requests, um, we had to stop uh, many applications uh, uh, because uh, because of um, not uh, complete uh, compliance uh, of the patients' that were requests. Uh, so <clears throat> now you see we're just a bit uh, speeding up uh, with the recording just to show you that uh, uh, we will close uh, 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 isolation of uh, left pulmonary veins uh, soon. Uh, what you can see on this picture is that um, uh, the, the, the diameter of uh, each application is about around five uh, uh, millimeters. So this uh, left atrium is huge, it's really huge. It's uh, uh, 57 millimeters in uh, his uh, diameter. And uh, the distance between the, uh, the veins and the veins themselves are so huge that we have to, uh, to perform lots of, lots of applications. Um, it just happens, you know, sometimes uh, the, the, the number of uh, this, and the application, as you see in this patient, just around the left pulmonary veins is even more than enough for the full isolation of uh, pulmonary veins in other patients. But it's just uh, our case, uh, uh, patient with huge, uh, huge uh, left atrium, patient with uh, ejection fraction of uh, 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 29 as, uh, percent. So, in fact, with uh, um, uh, tachycardiomyopathy. So, at the moment, we are just uh, looking for any uh, signals in the uh, in, uh, left uh, uh, carina, uh, just to be sure that uh, we are not uh, leaving any uh, signals uh, or any gaps uh, in the carina. Uh, I notice that more anterally I ablate, uh, more often I have to check carina and sometimes add uh, some extra application in carina. Um, in this particular patient, I decided to close uh, to uh, carina uh, uh, fully, just to be sure that uh, even if uh, any of uh, uh, single vein um, uh, reconduct, the other vein will be still uh, isolated, hopefully. So we finished um, uh, with the isolation of a left pulmonary vein. We've moved to uh, right pulmonary veins uh, and now. So again, I'm starting on posterior wall. And um, with this huge um, uh, left atrium, uh, sometimes the displacement of the uh, esophagus is uh, 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 more to the left or more to the right than in the middle. But uh, the distance from right to left pulmonary veins is so big that sometimes you don't have to jump on posterior wall on right or left side, depending where a patient reports the pain. So in this case, you notice that I was not jumping on uh, on the posterior wall as I was doing uh, uh, when ablating around um, left pulmonary veins. That's because patient uh, didn't uh, uh, report any pain on the posterior wall. So in our conclusion, uh, our conclusion was that we are far, far away from uh, esophagus. And that's, that's the benefit of a patient which is uh, alert and in full contact with you. So again, uh, showing in real time, uh, a real time uh, application uh, with uh, uh, 50 volts. Although application, of course, we're done with 50 volts, as you've noticed, but sometimes we are speeding up with a uh, recording 
just to uh, uh, shorten the, the presentation time. Uh, usually it's quite easy to ablate uh, where I am now, so it's the, just the, 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 the interatial septum, uh, left interatial septum or, or uh, beginning of uh, atrial, atrial wall, but in this, uh, in this patient, uh, uh, as you notice uh, during the transeptal puncture, uh, the, the, the punctured uh, uh, septum was uh, quite uh, thin, thick and uh, elastic. And sometimes such uh, such uh, septum uh, keeps um, uh, or make it more difficult to uh, operate with uh, uh, with a sheet, uh, even with uh, steerable sheets like uh, Angelis. And uh, I'm always trying to be quite careful in this uh, region uh, because we are quite close to, to displacing the, the catheter. Uh, uh, back to uh, right atrium and uh, we don't want to spend uh, extra time and uh, extra uh, uh, x-ray just for uh, crossing back to uh, left atrium. Uh, what you see at the moment so we just move the bar of uh, voltage map uh, upwards uh, just to see the uh, regions of uh, higher amplitude, higher uh, bipolar amplitude. There is a kind of information, extra information I sometimes use just to be sure uh, uh, if the region is uh, thinner or thicker. Uh, that's why I'm uh, more uh, more uh, focus on uh, using uh, 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 longer, sometimes longer application if the uh, uh, region is uh, thicker, uh, just to be uh, sure that I uh, burn it through. So, <clears throat> generally, we finished uh, isolation of uh, pulmonary, uh, right pulmonary veins at the moment, and we're checking. Uh, as I like uh, the, 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 the uh, isolation of the veins. Uh, again, what I'm doing is um, I'm checking it with uh, pacing from the tip of uh, ablation, ablating, uh, ablation uh, uh, catheter, uh, but I always keep an eye on good contact with the uh, uh, tissue. Uh, again, if you, you, you could be in the vein, but uh, not having a good contact with the tissue and pacing from such an um, uh, electrode, which le le let's call, uh, call it swimming in inside, uh, uh, inside the, 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 the um, um, vein, you will have no capture and you, you, you would think that you have full isolation, but you are uh, pacing nothing, but with a contact force catheter, you know that you are pacing the wall of pulmonary vein, and always I'm what I'm trying. I'm always trying to be just behind the wall and not to go too much inside the vein, uh, uh, checking the line itself and checking the region just uh, uh, behind the line. Sometimes, uh, as you see on this picture. If you go uh, even deeper in, in, into the vein, uh, you will have some kind of capture, uh, like here. Uh, but uh, uh, this um, the distance from the capture to the, uh, from the stimulus to the uh, uh, captured uh, signals uh, report, uh, recorded on uh, coronary sinus uh, catheter is so long that. Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, the successful capture of uh, right edge, in fact. Thank you for watching.
Zobaczyliśmy właśnie zabieg u pacjenta 47-letniego z trachy kardiopatii, prawdopodobnie arytmiczną, frakcję około 20, lewy przedsionek 5,5. Zabieg rozpoczęliśmy na migotaniu przedsionków, takie trosze trudniejsze niż zwykle, nakłucie transseptalne bezpośrednio agilisem. Po kardiopatii lewego przedsionka wykonaliśmy kardiowersję elektryczną, później mapowanie elektryczne, mapowanie potencjałowe lewego przedsionka i izolację czterech żył płucnych po lewej stronie jeszcze żyły wymagały dodatkowych aplikacji w karinie pomiędzy, pomiędzy żyłami lewymi. Po zabiegu potwierdziliśmy szczelność, ponowny remap HD gridem, także zabieg wygląda na, na, na skuteczny w chwili obecnej. Jak będzie w odległej obserwacji, mam nadzieję, że, że równie do, dobrze. Reszta przedsionka wygląda potencjałowo zdrowo, dlatego żeśmy nie wykonywali dodatkowych aplikacji.